Hello BitsBoo, this is Greg from BitsBox.co.uk here with another video. So this one is the next part of my cursed city painting tutorial, but I'm also going to sort of mix it in with a sort of Blanjitsu style paint job as well. So originally I was going to do a video for the Crimson Court and do this cursed city one as well, but and the colour schemes are very similar, so I thought I'd just put them both into one video. So I'm still doing my original plan of using like a warm colour palette for the cursed city um, vampires, zombies and whatnot, um, but also my soul bite stuff is going to use a very similar scheme and it's sort of Blanjitsu-esque so we're going for a really sort of gritty, sort of grimy, rusty sort of look. So um, yeah, both work really well with a warm palette. So yeah, I'm going to show you a couple of miniatures and paint them along in this video. So I hope you guys enjoy. So here I have one of the skeletons from Cast City and one of the vampires from the Crimson Court. And I'm going to start with that armour, so because I'm going for this sort of gritty Blanjitsu look, I want to start with some Typhus Corrosion and just going over all the armour plates with this, just with an old brush. And this will add just a little bit of texture to that armour, so I'm not applying it too thickly, I'm just going to spread it around. But yeah, that gives a really nice texture to work with. And I'm going to do it on the weapons blades as well. So once that's dry, I'm going to take some lead belcher now. And I'm going to dry brush this over these areas. So a fairly heavyish dry brush. I want to catch just a little bit more than the corners. And but mostly just all the edges and corners and stuff. But doesn't matter if it's a little bit heavier and you get a bit more on. Picking up all that texture, of course, from the typhus corrosion. And then I'll go a little bit heavier with it on the areas I actually want to be silver like the blades. So once that is dry, then I'm going to take some contrast paint. Um, you can take any colour you want. I'm using Griffhound Orange, but um, it depends what colour armour you want to use if you're following along this tutorial. Um, reds look quite nice, and as do blues and greens and whatnot. But I'm going with um, this orange. And just, yeah, straight out of the pot, just chucking it on all the metallic areas. Now some areas will be gold or brass a little bit later on, so... But I'm still going over all of them, so that doesn't really matter too much. Then I'm going to take some Agrax Earthshade. Now I've got it in one of these little things that GW provide to stop it from tipping over. And yeah, I'm just again going straight out of the pot. I'm going to spread it around and just go over all these areas. So that'll just um, obviously sit in the recesses and it just darkens this purple down a little. Uh, purple is <laughs> orange down a little bit. I don't even know colours anymore. <laughs> And yeah, then it's back in with the lead belcher, and again, this time a very light dry brush. And this time we do just want the sort of edges and corners and that. I apologise if the picture wants to go out of focus a little bit now and then. Um, such is the autofocus I've got on it. There we go. Yeah, it's very carefully just going around. Like so. And of course I'm doing this on both miniatures at the same time, um, I probably don't need to say that as you can see, but I will switch between the two which one I'm using on different steps. So for all the sort of cloth areas, and I'll use a cape as an example on this one, I'm going to start with some Steel Legion Drab. And as you can see it's going to need two or three thin coats to give us a nice coverage. But once that's dry, that'll look pretty nice. And then we can come back in with our friend Agrax. And you can see I'm just really dumping it on. But I'm obviously I'm gonna sort of um, suck up the edges. Because um, you don't want it to sort of pull. You can see where it's sort of pulling there. So you come in with another brush and you just soak that back up. And next up I'm going to mix in some Shafty Bone to a Steel Legion Drab to make the highlight. So I didn't feel there was a particularly great colour in the TW range to highlight this. So yeah, I'm just going, just sort of um, layering up a little highlight here. Um, you can of course um, stipple on your highlights to get some nice texture. There's some good burn tutorials online doing stuff like that. Um, if these weren't sort of more 
rank and file. I mean, I could have done it on the Crimson Court because they are sort of hero miniatures, but I just want to show you just the sort of quick and easy way of painting these because they really don't take too long at all to paint, which is what I really like about painting stuff in this style. So the brass areas are going to be painted with Rune Lord Brass. I'm such a huge fan of this colour um, since it's come out, I've used so much of it. Um, I don't like using bright golds, especially on stuff like this, so brass colours are so much better. And this one has such a good coverage. Um, for a GW Metallic as well, it's quite rare. So, big, big fan of it. And yeah, just painting a few areas in this colour. And again, I apologise, um, the focus is all over the place on this. Um, maybe next time I will just go on manual rather than auto, but... It is what it is. So, yeah, I'm actually going to take a contrast paint now and the fi uh, Fire Slayer Flesh and just thin it down and use that as a wash. I like how, how it's got sort of like an orangey redness to it. Um, of course you can just use your Agrex if you want, if you want something more brown, but yeah, I'm quite liking using contrast paints as washes just to mix things up a bit. And it's thinned down as well, so it's it's not going to be too heavy, which I quite like. And then once again, we're back in the lead belcher, um, just to do some little ledge highlights. Um, I thinned it down a little bit, and just yeah, just carefully getting little corners and whatnot. So onto the skin areas now. Of course, um, I'll be focusing this on the vampire. I'm going to take Bugman's glow. So. I wanted to add like red into the flesh colour and when I mixed up some, I think I mixed up some Kis Kislev flesh or Caden flesh tone with some red, it basically just came out like Bugman's Glow. So I thought well we'll just start with Bugman's Glow instead. And I'll try not to nudge the camera as I do it. Um, so yeah, it's it's a really nice base paint as well, so it goes on pretty nice. Then I'm going to mix in some grey suit with it to give us a nice sort of really sort of muted highlight. So of course um, these being vampires, you know, they're essentially dead. Um, mixing in, sort of having a ready sort of skin tone is a bit of a weird one because it sort of suggests life. Um, but adding in the grey for the highlights and that it sort of negates that a little bit and makes it sort of quite pale. So it almost, so that's what I'm going for is like that they used to be a live sort of thing and now that life has been sort of um, taken out of their skin tone, shall we say, um, if that makes sense. But anyway, because um, I'm using a warm palette, that sort of limits me a bit as well, so I can't add in blues and greens and stuff. Um, but that's fine. So next up, I'm just taking pure grey seer on its own and filling it out a little bit. And this is going to be my sort of sharper highlight, so just hitting the knuckles, things like that. Uh, clearly need a little bit more on my brush, and I, I have a habit of mixing in the lid for the pot, so I'll stick a little bit of water in the pot, in the sort of top of the pots, and sort of mix in there. Not something you should do really, but never mind. And yeah, just hitting um, features on the face, cheeks, nose, around the mouth, eyebrows. Um, if you watch my videos, you know that's just how I always do it on faces. And that's pretty much it for that. And now we move on to the bones on the skeleton. And that's going to be a Morgast Bone uh, for the base coat. And I'm painting the bone in a very simple, simple way on this one. And I do a couple of thin coats with this one because I just don't quite cover the black. And then our old friend Agrax Earthshade is back once again. Now of course, um. If you're really into your banditsu stuff, you can use like oil washers here, like a burnt amber. Um, everywhere I've, uh, where I've used Agrax, you could use that instead, which would be awesome. Um, but just for sake of time and and um, sort of ease of video, I'm just going straight into the Agrax. And then the Shabdi Bone for the highlights. And you could take a further highlight here and use some Scream and Skull afterwards if you want, but I just sort of just stopped it here. I didn't want the bones to look too bright. So, just a very simple way of painting them, but. They look quite cool. And now it's a bad and black for the hair, so I wasn't quite sure what colour to do the hair, but I thought, keep it simple, just do it black. And again, I apologise, the focus is just 
awful. It just wants to focus on my fingers and not the miniature. Um, but you know what's going on here. You know what's going on. We're painting the hair black. And then <laughs> move on to the other miniature and paint the highlights, um, which will be with Eshin Grey. There we go, put it in shot. And yeah, just painting the strands of hair. Also, um, there's little straps and stuff on these miniatures and little bits on the scabbard. They're all also painted black in exactly the same way. And then the last little thing, I'm just taking some Word Bearers Red and I just want to paint like the pommel or the handles on like the knives and swords and stuff. And um, this colour works quite well with this scheme and um, the base is going to be a very sort of similar colour. I'm going, going with like a squig orange. Now I'm not going to show you how I paint the base in this video. Um, it's, but it's quite simple really. Um, I use um, Martian Iron Crust for the Cast City guy as well. But yeah, it's literally just a case of painting that. Web bears red on there. And here are the finished miniatures. So I'm really happy with how they turned out. And um, I really think the Crimson Court, especially, um, look really cool in this scheme. And yeah, um, I have been painting some other Cursed City stuff. I won't show you in this video, but you can check out our Instagram link down below. Um, everything I paint ends up on our Instagram. And there's also links to our Twitter and Facebook and things like that. Sometimes they end up on there as well, but mostly I focus on the Instagram for that. So definitely check that out down below. Um, if you have any comments, then please also um, leave them down below and you can like this video and all that jazz. Um, but all that's left to say from me is thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching 